whipped it up and my mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving Lord, I will bless you O Lord I will bless you O Lord with a bless you O Lord with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless you Lord and with my hands lifted up I will bless you, O Lord. Yes, we will bless you, O Lord. We will bless you, O Lord. And we'll add a brother Mel. And we will bless you, O Lord. Yes, we will bless you, O Lord. There is no doubt about it. I mean, the sky might be falling, the earth crumbling under our feet. But Lord, show us how to hang on to you. And the best way... On this November 18th is to get out God's word. This is who he is. This is where he is. This is... I welcome you to pray first for a good connection. And I will try to stop so that you don't miss words. And um, and I think we all ought to be praying for Mr. Zuckerberg after his appearance and his evasion of all questions. We will pray for him and we will pray for a good connection that we can use this live facility to record like they made available, right? I didn't do it. They made it available. So please, Facebook, stop interfering. On this November 18th, we will be blessed with Ezekiel 37 and 38. Wow, Ezekiel is some prophet, isn't he? And I love this first ver this first sentence. The hand of the Lord came upon me, Ezekiel, and I love this, and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. Wow. Brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down. Do you suppose he was translated like a little helicopter in the air? It makes me wonder, right? And set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Can you imagine him when he got set down in the valley and he went, <laughs> it was full of bones. And then he caused me to pass by them all around. He took him on a trip all around these bones. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? How about that question from the Lord? And so I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. <laughs> Ezekiel saying, I don't know, but I suspect asking me the question, you know you're going to do something here. And again he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Now imagine that. Just take that in. Take that in as a good spiritual lesson. We can prophesy to things. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Get that, O oh, dry bones. And so we say, O oh, all you people who haven't accepted Jesus yet, hear the word of the Lord. O oh, all you Christians who are strong, hallelujah, yes, but you can get more, so... Hear the word of the Lord, I prophesy to you. Okay, I prophesy to you. Ezekiel did, and so is Jane, and so can you. Okay, I mean, come on. Let's really stir up the gifts these days because we need it. We need it. 
Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Now imagine that. I mean, Ezekiel's telling us he's looking at just a big pile of them. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And isn't that what he did to make us? That's how I think of myself. I started out as a little seed from my father. But then God put sinews on me and flesh on me, and he covered me with skin, and then he put breath in me when I came out. And I understand from my mother, the doctor gave me a good smack on the hinder parts. And I breathed. And you shall live. And then you shall know that I am the Lord. I guess so. If you saw that, if you and I actually saw that happen, I mean, nothing could stop our belief. So let's believe the word, okay? Right? Miss Kathy, Sharon, welcome. Let's just believe the word like we were there. Let it come alive off the page. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, he must be keeping on going, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Now imagine seeing that. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Oh, isn't that a wonderful lesson? Prophesy to the breath, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain. Now we know how they died. They were slain. Breathe on these slain, that they may live. We're talking about a resurrection, y'all. Are you getting that? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing to me. I'm enjoying it so much. We are talking about a resurrection of who knows how many people from their dead, dry bones, not buried, but laying there. <laughs> so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. How about that? I mean, I'll bet Ezekiel's eyes were this big. <laughs> and then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And I wonder, you talking about the very first one born, Lord? Are you talking about all of them that are there today? Are you talking about all the babies in the wombs that haven't been born yet? Are you talking about all of the Jews down the line of years coming yet? I think so. I think so in this great mirror. I mean an exceedingly great army. And he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. How about that? Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Ezekiel's prophesying life, isn't he? Thus says the Lord God, behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And we are seeing that every day today, y'all. Every day. It doesn't matter what's going on. God's going to do what he's going to do. 
and then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. And in my lifetime, what I just read has come to pass. I mean, Israel was not a nation until 1948. I was born in 1939. I remember vaguely. I remember. And he started making a new country like that. Bringing his people up out of the graves of the whole world where they've been cast and bringing them into your own land. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, as for you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. That's what he was to write on the stick. And then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And then join them one to another for yourself into one stick, and they will become one in your hand. And that's what's happened. They aren't two separate groups over there in that country today in 2020. They are all one nation. They have been joined together. Where back when these bones were raised up, they were against each other. And when the children of your people speak to you saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah. Oh, hallelujah. Here comes Scott. Hallelujah, Scott. <laughs> we, need, we need your expertise in many little things here about where we are. I mean, we are raising up these dry bones, dry bones, dry bones, dry bones, dry bones, them dry bones. And the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. And then say to them, thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. Wow, good news. <laughs> they shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. And the Lord is working on all that, working all that, working old things out and bringing this word to pass in their life. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes. And aren't we all in a process of that? To do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. 
I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Really? Well, we need another one then, don't we? My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forever. And we have our dear friend Scott, who could certainly tell us eons, matter of fact, writing a book <laughs> to tell more about it. And the wonderful teachings on Tuesday night of Joseph Good, his dear friend and partner. So Scott, put that back on there. Put that back on there. We will get more people to watch. All right, now we move along to chapter 38 of Ezekiel. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog and the land of Magog. And am I right, Scott? Russia? The prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Lib Libya are with them, all of them. And notice who's with them. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer, and all its troops, the house of Togormach from the far north, and all its troops, many people are with you. Woo! <coughs> Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited in the latter days, and if that isn't our time coming up, <laughs> it's, it's here, I believe. And in the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. That's what we see right now, right? You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud. You and all your troops and many peoples with you. Put fear in my heart. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, <clears throat> I will go up against a land of unmauled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take plunder. That's why they're going to take plunder and to take booty to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, 
to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord God, on that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? And then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud. We're hearing this again. To cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. Now that's quite a statement there. That's quite a statement. Thus says the Lord God, Are you he of whom I have spoken in former times by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years, prophesied for years, we've read it, in those days that I would bring you against them. And it will come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all the creeping things that creep on the earth, and all the men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. Ooh. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. <clears throat> Where's the punishment gonna come from? <laughs> up he says I will rain down on him thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations they shall know then they shall know that I am the Lord Ooh. did you get all that at least the reading of it. Hallelujah. We move right along to the book of James because I spent some extra time on that and it was worth it and it needed to be done. James chapter 1 and moving and reading into 2 also. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We just read about God's wrath, didn't we? <clears throat> For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. 
For he observes himself and then goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. <clears throat> if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Take that one in, right? <clears throat> Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Oh my goodness, isn't this just rich and wonderful? <clears throat> Chapter 2 of James. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and you say to him, oh, you sit here in a good place. And you say to the poor man, well, stand over there, or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into courts? Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? Christian, believer. Don't they blaspheme that? Yes. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law <clears throat> and yet stumble in one point. He is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have been, become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. <clears throat> For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Wow, there is a great statement. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food? And one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body? What does it profit? Thus also faith by itself. If it does not have works, it's dead. It's dead. All right. <clears throat> we move right along to Psalm 117, just a short little psalm. Good thing after all my long-windedness of 
the Old Testament. Psalm 117, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. And we wrap up today with Proverbs 28, verse 1. Moving along to a new chapter now in Proverbs. Proverbs 28, 1. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Right? I mean, they shoot off their mouths a lot, but boy, you start coming after them and they flee. <laughs> and they flee when no one's pursuing. But the righteous are bold as a lion. And that's what you and I need to be. And enjoy Kathy's graphics. Enjoy Kathy's graphics. They're great. They help. They, they help bring it alive. Hallelujah. Let's close in prayer. Thank you so much, Scott, for all of your little <clears throat> nuggets of wisdom here to share with us. We appreciate it so much. Father God, we are grateful. Oh, Lord, we are so grateful for you. We are so grateful, Jesus, that you came, that you suffered that you died for us, that we might have salvation. We might have this promise of eternal life. It far supersedes everything we could mention of the world, Lord. It far, and we just, we feel like we've just barely scratched the depth of you. You are eternal. You your depth, who, who can know the whole depth? But we will spend eternity trying and being with you. And so, Father God, help us on this earth. Help us. Help us to treasure your word, to read it faithfully, to study it, to look up things. Scott is a great example to us. We'll look up, see what the Hebrew says. He, he inspires me a lot. Father, we hold up Israel and Jerusalem. We hold them up. You've asked us to. We're happy to. And we pray for what you said. We pray for her peace. We pray for her peace. We have just read one of the most fierce chapters in the Bible, Ezekiel 38. And what's ahead? And it's grievous. <clears throat> but Lord, we will trust in you. We will trust in you. You love your people. And you will display yourself in great power, great wrath to the enemies. And so, Lord, it's our pleasure today to pray for her peace, her peace this day. Peace to all the families, all the little children, everyone arriving, maybe making Aliyah today, arriving in the land. I'm sure they're kind of shaking. Where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do? How will I learn Hebrew? All of the things that happen when you move to a new country. Father, please give Bibi Netanyahu your wisdom. Let him seek you. Let the Knesset seek you. Father, help all of the archaeologists and all of the students of your word, all studying Torah, Father, bring it to light for them. Bring it to light. Bring them to you. Bring them to you. We bless you for this. And then, Lord, 
First, I'm going to hold up all of the people, all of your precious sons and daughters who've come today or will listen later. Or maybe they won't get this. Maybe they'll stumble on it a week from now. Who knows? But Lord, you know. You know. And you will take your word wherever you want it to go. We just read it. We just open it up. My, my voice, it, it can be nowhere except within my kitchen here. But reading your word live, you Holy Ghost can take it anywhere you want. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would cause many who are seeking you and many who are upset, perhaps, with things going on today, bring them, Lord, to your word that they might come into a foundation in you and know that they belong to your eternal body, your eternal body. Father God, I hold up President Donald John Trump, this unbelievable wonder worker who has done incredible things for the United States of America and who now is going through the fight of his life. And America is going through the fight of her life to maintain this wonderful way of life we have to be able to vote. And so, Father, we'd ask that you would just come in like we read, like a cloud. <clears throat> Lord, we know you have a plan. And Father God, we lift it up and we say, Father, have your way. Have your way. I'm going to believe that you're going to preserve America for a while yet. For a while yet. Until we get this out to the rest of the world who do not have it yet. I have little mountain areas in Kenya. Don't have it yet. It's my desire to have help to buy Bibles and get it to them into their hands. They are crying and asking and wanting it. And so are all the other nations of the world. And so, Father God, we'd ask that you would cause us to keep the main point, the main point of America and of why she is the way she is, that we might get your word out, that all might hear, all might hear the gospel and have a chance to be saved, to be born again, a brand new life. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for gathering us, that from all different places in the country, that we can gather just for this little time. Thank you, precious Lord. God bless <clears throat> Scott and Joseph Good in all of their endeavors and all of the fabulous teaching toward the next temple that we might have understanding of actually the depth of what it's about. Bless them, Lord, all in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and all of God's people, Cried a hearty amen, went about your day, went about your own study and praising. Bye-bye.